Hello YouTube, it is Champion DJK coming at you again with another weekly episode. I've got some cool stuff to share with you today, including this awesome t-shirt. Isn't this cool? Make cheese, not war, man. Anyway, um, wholeheartedly believe in that. Um, anyway, I'm in Wisconsin. All right, so it's, this is all going to be premium diecast. All of it is going to be premium diecast. There's not a Hot Wheel in here. There's not a Matchbox in here. Uh, there's not an Auto World in here, which is premium anyway. But um, there's not anything else but uh, some Japanese and Chinese stuff. So I hope you guys enjoy it. It's all very, very premium. It's all very, very detailed. And it's all very, very nice. So you guys should like it. Um, hopefully you do. So long story longer, package stuck in Japan. Finally got it. Uh, I got it by way of FedEx, which was awesome. It was super quick and it wasn't that expensive. Um, but I also got one other piece, or one other piece of mail, I should say. Uh, from my buddy uh, Travis Heavy Metal 164. Um, he's probably shown this on his channel already, but this is a Toyota Land Cruiser LC100. Very, very cool because uh, to what he said, it's the only version of this in 164 scale that he knows of. And here it is. All right, so he had me um, acquire a couple of these for him, and then in return for that, um, he bought one for me and gave it to me. So, thank you, Travis. This is pretty sick. So he bought this for me and he gave it to me. He's it comes in I want to say like five total colors or something. I know it comes in white, silver, black. I think maybe red, uh, green. Obviously is what you're seeing here. Maybe blue too. I'm not really sure, but. Uh, this thing is actually very, very impressive, and we are going to take a look at it in the second segment of the video, outside of the package, um, and we'll talk about it some more. Uh, it, it's it's pretty inter It's a pretty interesting piece. There's more than just um, what meets the eye with this thing, so we're definitely going to take a look at that and um, kind of debate on what we think about that. So pretty cool. I'm also going to probably do a, a write-up on the Lamley blog on this piece. I might, uh, depending on what I discover with it. But we'll see, we'll see what happens. We're going to talk about it in a little bit, so stay tuned. Um, then I got a nice, sizable box from Japan. Um, this is from Hobby Link Japan. Free plug for you guys. Um, great seller. Uh, in Japan and uh, just does a great job. I've got uh, this guy right here, Ferrari Testarossa in black. Very awesome, very cool to have this one. So this catches me up with my Testarossas and my 512TRs in black. So this is a nice pair. Um, I think these actually came out uh, March. Was this a March release? It was either March March or April. I think it was March that these black um, Testarossas and 512TR came out. Um, so yeah, I already have the other ones. I've got the 512TR in red and yellow, and then I've got the Testarossa in red, and I think that's all that's been used of the tooling or whatever. So, But we'll take a look at these black ones. We'll pull them out of the package. We will look at them in the second segment of the video. Hopefully you enjoy that. Um, sticking with Tomica Limited Vintage for a moment, um, this is the only one I ordered from the May release, which is this one right here. I picked one of this casting. It came out in two colors. This is the Subaru Legacy Touring Wagon GT. Um, and this is a brand new casting uh, from Tomica Limited Vintage, which is why it has an LVN 201A. The A is how you tell it's the first color of the release. So there's an A and a B that are out right now. Um, so, pretty cool. Uh, we're gonna take a look at this. I'm actually stoked to get this out of the package. It's cool, it doesn't look like it has any extra like glue on parts, which sometimes they do. Um, so I'm pumped to get a, get a peek at that car. Um, and then I got this. 
This is a car actually that I've been eyeing up for a while and kind of wanted and thought was really cool. Uh, the problem with it is, is it was expensive, uh, but this website had them on sale. They were running a sale on these and this was super cheap uh, in comparison to what it normally is. I think I paid $20 for this, okay? Um, this is from, I believe this is a Western Police uh, series, Tomica Limited Vintage. So they have this police, this is volume 21, so they have a bunch of cars from, I think, this TV series in Japan. Not super familiar with it, but uh, anyway, this car is pretty awesome. It's a Gazelle. And we are going to take a look at it in the second segment of the video. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. Uh, but this thing is super sweet. It's got the fancy packaging where the box is up here. That's there. It's the Gazelle. So yeah, we'll peek at that. I think that's a Nissan Silvia, right? But uh, anyway, we'll, we'll get up close and personal with it in the second segment. All right, then moving away from Tomica Limited Vintage, but not Tomica altogether, we've got Tomica Premium. I picked up this new release, Nissan Skyline GTR KPG C10, number 34, in silver. Um, I wanted to get the white one too, and I tried to get it. I had it in my cart, and then for some reason I like slept on it, and they ran out of them. And I think the, the white one's like the first release, like commemorative edition or whatever. I think that's supposed to be a Japan-only release. Uh, they did have some of them available, but unfortunately I slept on it and didn't end up with them, uh, with the white one. But I do have the silver one, and it's pretty cool. I've got some versions of this car and other things. I think uh, I've got, what, like a green light makes this car. Um, I think I have one in Kyosho. I might. I'm looking at my Kyosho right now. Maybe I don't have this tooling in Kyosho. I know they made it. Um, I think they also made it in Konami as well. I think. Could be wrong. But anyway, got this one, Tomica Premium. Tomica Premium is kind of a cool in-betweener thing between the basics and the Tomica Limited Vintage. And then I picked up this piece right here, which is from Oversteer. Still don't understand this company. I, this is the second Oversteer piece I've ever had. Uh, this one is a Mazda MX-5, or Mazda Roadster, 2015 Mazda. I don't know a lot about this brand, Oversteer. They've come up with a few different cars in the past. Not many toolings, though, but they are very, very highly detailed. Um, I showed a GTR in a recent video, a recent Diecast Weekly episode. It might have been probably two or three episodes ago. Uh, so check that out if you get the chance, if you haven't seen it. Um, this is very, very detailed and actually might even be more detailed than that GTR is. So I'm kind of stoked to take a look at it. So they had this in white. It wasn't very expensive. Um, I decided to go ahead and uh, pick it up and we'll check it out and see what we think of it in the second segment of the video. And that's it. So all premium diecast pieces this week. Um, also, hopefully you've been uh, reading the Lamley blog um, Today is actually, I'm filming this on a Thursday night, even though it's not going to be put out till Saturday. Uh, but I, uh, today, I think actually I had like three articles or whatever on the blog. So hopefully you guys are reading that. You find it cool. Um, there's a lot of cool things going on at the blog. The, the group of writers that we're with are pretty awesome. They're fun uh, to talk to and stuff like that. And just Lamley in general is really kind of branching out, and I'm hoping you guys are enjoying that as well. Um, so it's just been really kind of neat. You know, he's doing a bunch of live stuff, uh, interviewing some people. Um, and I think it's really cool, and it's kind of cool to be somewhat of a part of it, you know, being a writer for the blog. So it's been a really cool experience, so I hope you guys are enjoying it too. Um, let's go ahead and flip the camera around. Let's take a look at this nice, 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 nice stuff. Uh, close up, and hopefully you guys like it. All right, stay tuned. All right, guys. So let's uh, let's start by taking a peek at this Toyota Land Cruiser LC100. Now, when um, Heavy Metal 164 got this piece originally, uh, I think he got, I don't know, I want to say like a silver one first, that would be obvious for him, because I think he obviously likes silver cars, I think the best, if you watch his channel, you guys know that, um, 
he said to me, he made a comment stating that this was the best car in 164 scale ever. So that's interesting, right? Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Here's a quick peek around the packaging. Now, sadly, I'm under the impression that this is probably not licensed. I don't know how you guys feel about that, but it appears it's a made in China. It's made by this Hikasi model, which I have no idea what that company is. This is the only model, as far as I know, that they've ever made is this. So here's a little card art for you, right? So I am clueless as to what this is. I mean, they have a little bit of legalese back here, but there really isn't, you know, much other than built up model car not suitable under 14 years old and that's it just a warning like don't choke on this thing um, and don't give it to a kid because they you know they'll wreck it or choke on it or something anyway so that's all you get there's no like nothing that says it's licensed by toyota there's nothing um like that whatsoever uh, the car itself, and I'm guessing this is per color, is limited to 386, or sorry, limited to 1,500 pieces. This, and they're individually numbered on this metal plate. 164 limited edition Toyota Land Cruiser LC100 high cost model. I have no idea who a high cost model is. But you've been kind of getting that a lot. There's been some weird stuff coming out of China. Uh, one-off releases um, under one, a brand name that will just be for the one casting of the car. And I don't know if it's like the same people doing it. What's going on? I have no idea. Maybe we'll investigate further at some future time. Uh, but the one thing I will say is this is this definitely is very nice. And I can tell immediately from pulling it off the base. Um, I was under the impression almost that this was, because when it first got to me, it was super hot outside, and I thought this was possibly a um, resin car. As it turns out, it is actually metal. It's a uh, full-on metal. And this he told me about, but guess what, guys? It's got suspension, like a Tomica Limited Vintage would. Um, it's got fantastic details just fantastic to just get lens details up front for the headlights little toyota logo there that's like perfectly done i mean there's absolutely nothing wrong with this casting look at the defogger lines in the back windshield a little windshield wiper it is amazingly detailed like just amazingly detailed a little trailer hitch on the back there the base is pretty detailed as well not that that matters too much um, I don't you know with it having suspension though it doesn't really roll very well the back the back wheels on this thing actually roll great the front ones are a bit tight and that's probably due I don't want to screw this thing up obviously um, it's probably due to these wheels being put on like too tight on this axle it's what it feels like anyway um, if you look close and I don't know how I don't know if I'm gonna pull this off on camera but if you look close it does have the brakes in the back with the brake calipers the disc brakes and they do not rotate with the wheels so they are static but yet the wheels I believe this thing's supposed to roll decent this back wheel rolls like nothing uh, the front wheel, on the other hand, does not, and I am definitely thinking that that is due to the wheels being just put on too tight. I could probably play with that um, off camera and get it to roll just fine. But, you know, and honestly, does it really matter if it does or not? It's a bit of a debate. It looks like there's a little flaw in the casting right here that's showing through the paint. And that's about all the flaw you can find on it. Um, beautifully done look at the mirrors reflective you can actually see like the door line or whatever right there in the mirror I mean that's the best side view mirrors I've ever seen I think that little plate back here is actually metal too land cruiser Uh, yeah. 
uh, extremely detailed with the writing on the thing. I almost don't want to touch this thing. It's uh, it's very, very detailed. It's very, very awesome. It feels a little fragile, but it, yet it does feel a little bit robust at the same time. And I think, honestly, it's supposed to completely roll. This one just doesn't. The back wheel just rolls super easy. The front one doesn't. So we're not going to force it too much. But yeah, really interesting piece of die cast. I hope you guys find that interesting. Um, I think it's pretty cool. I'm, I'm going to look into it a little bit more, and I might write a little bit about it. We'll, we'll see. All right. Um, let's stick to the weird first before we go into Tomica stuff. Um, let's do this oversteer. So this is another brand I'm not super familiar with. Um, these are made in China, I believe. But they're, it's a Japanese company. A lot more legalese on the back of this. I'm guessing this is licensed. So I'm guessing this thing is, It's. I think it's licensed. It's hard to tell, obviously. I can't read Japanese. I don't know if it says Mazda somewhere in here. I have no clue. Oh, it says Mazda Roadster 15 up here. Oh, approved by Mazda Corporation. Okay, so, I mean, that could be true or not. Who knows? But uh, I think it is a licensed model. It would make sense. It's in Japan. It's a Japanese company, and yada, yada, yada. It's probably right. Version 2.0, I don't really know if that's just because this is the second time they've released this tooling or if this is these toolings being re-released. I'm not sure on that. This also comes in an acrylic case, much like the uh, the one we just looked at, the Land Cruiser. And as you can see off the bat, uh, it is very detailed. It appears to be quite detailed. Little intent on the back we want to be careful of. Definitely, uh, that's a piece we're not going to want to mess up. Oh, look at this. We also get side view mirror detail on this one. Of course, lens detail and all this stuff. Uh, let's carefully take it off the base and check it out. Does it roll? Hey, it does. It does roll. Rolls quite well. You get like the discs behind the thing. There's no brake caliper though, and the, and the disc rotates like with the wheel. So, but uh, yeah, this is very nice though. I'm going to say this is definitely the best MX-5 or Mazda Miata or whatever you want to call it uh, tooling that I have ever seen. Look at that in the front. A little Mazda. It's like inlaid in there. It's like clear coated over, but it's metal. Or not metal, or plastic, chrome plastic, or whatever. Uh, lens details for the headlights. It's very, very detailed. It's very impressively detailed. The wheels look great. Uh, look at that. Ooh, you get a rear view mirror. I didn't even notice that on the first pass. Pretty awesome. The details inside of here are fantastic, too. Look at the little Mazda logo on the steering wheel. All right, that's just crazy. This is probably worthy of some really good pictures to really show off all of the details of this car. I'm actually quite impressed with this. I'm a lot more impressed with this one than I was with the GTR. The GTR had a Tomica Limit to Vintage to compare it to and stuff like that. And that's not really why I didn't like it that much. It seemed like the quality control wasn't quite there as compared to this car. And I don't think the detail was quite there compared to this car. I'm going to have to look back at that car. I have it, of course, still, so kind of compare it. But this thing seems like it's much more detailed and much more nice. Um, but I am definitely digging this piece. I think this piece is awesome. All right, so let's put that one aside. Um, the next thing we're going to look at here is Tomica Limit. Or actually, let's do this. Let's get this one out of the way. This is a Tomica Premium piece. I should have unwrapped this thing before filming. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, man, they've got a lot of stuff out there. You know, a lot of memes saying that 2020 sucks. 
and all that. And, you know, there's a lot that sucks about 2020, but I'll tell you what. One thing that doesn't suck about 2020 is the die cast. Not that that's super important to, or should be more important than a lot of things, but man, there's been some cool stuff that have come out, including this. Alright, so this is your classic Tomica Premium. If you're not familiar with the brand, let me just quick break it down for you. They're not straight up 164 scale. They don't claim to be, but they do list their scale on their packaging. This is actually 161 scale. I don't know why they go for an odd scale. I have no idea if it's just something to do with them fitting in the box or something to do with licensing. Who knows why they don't do it. Um, this is in 161 scale, however, which is not a bad scale. You know, it's pretty close to 164. It's not too far off, but it's definitely a little bit larger. Um, maybe the reason why they do it is because of moving parts and stuff like that. They may have a set, you know, they might use the same mechanism for the doors on all their cars that they have opening doors. And, you know, in order to make that work, it's got to be in a certain scale. I'm not really sure. Anyway, very, very cool. They also have plastic wheels so if you're not a fan of plastic wheels you may not like this brand however they're like great plastic wheels because they're actually unique to whatever vehicle they're on they're not generic so they're appropriate for the vehicle they also have suspension and uh, it's usually they have an opening feature this one has opening doors some of them will have an opening hood some of them will have an opening uh, trunk or whatever some of them will have whatever opening part they see is appropriate to do in the car uh, a lot of them also have lens detail or inserted detail for headlights and some of them also have it for taillights which this one has kind of an insert there uh, it's not a transparent insert but it's inserted nonetheless but one thing I will say about this brand that is undeniable is the quality. The quality of this brand is absolutely fantastic for the Tomica Premium. The paint is wonderfully done. They feel like they're very robustly built, even though they have plastic tires and a plastic base. Um, they feel like you know a kid could get a lot of joy actually, you know, playing with one of these cars, and that's probably what they're honestly meant for when they come out in Japan. Um, but they're just a fan they do a fantastic job on the castings the toolings and all that stuff and even if they have plastic tires it really doesn't matter these things look great they display great uh they're built great with great quality and they're much cheaper than their counterpoint counterpart which would be tomica limited vintage so let's go ahead and get into the cars that we've got for tomica limited vintage let's start with the newest one here this subaru legacy touring wagon gt lvn 201 a. I want to say the other color was like black, maybe, or white. I don't. I don't recall. Let's try not to wreck this box. I'm so impatient with these things. I end up ripping the box apart. And let's take a peek at this guy. Okay, so. I picked this color because it was the more interesting of the two colors. I don't remember what the other color was. It might have been white. It might have been black. I'm not sure. But I picked this maroon color. And I think I made the right choice uh, looking at this. It's always hard. The one thing I will knock on Tomic Limited Vintage, when they do the, like the printing, the artwork, like this one's pretty good representation. But a lot of times, the, whatever the artwork is, is not a great representation of what the actual color ends up on the, being on the cars. So sometimes it's tough to tell uh, which one you want. And some of like the images that they show online on these cars, it's like tough to tell. It just looks completely different once you get it in person. I think part of the reason is the gloss that you get on here when the packaging is all like a matte finish. But who knows? All right, so these have metal base, metal body. If you're familiar with Tomica Limited Vintage, you know they're they're pretty much amazing. And this one, you know. This is pretty good. It seems like the stance is a little bit high on the back of this car, but that may be not true at all. It could be right on. I don't know. They always have the blank white plates. That's another trait. Uh, lens detail or inserted detail in the back, including that bar that says Subaru across the back. There's really tiny printing in there. I don't know if we're going to be able to focus on it, but we will give it a shot. It says Legacy right there. Look at that. I mean, that is 
it's crazy. I mean, Tomac Limited Vintage. I will I will tell you this. They may not put as many cars out or types of cars that you think you'd be like interested in. And I've said this before. However, as far as diecast goes, uh, in 164 scale, they they are king. There is nobody that really. I mean, there might be some brands that come close, but there's nobody that can really touch them. As far as the quality, as far as the accuracy in 164 scale, and just how much of a beautiful job they do on these cars is just pretty immaculate, pretty amazing, and that's why they, they fetch the premium price out of the gate that they do. But what are you going to do? I mean, if you had a choice between a super treasure hunt and this, I, I, I know some people would pick super treasure hunt. And I don't blame you for that. That's fine. That's what you're into. That's good. You should do that. But uh, this, to me, is just more useful, I guess, in a collection. Much cooler to take pictures of. If I ever get into building dioramas, uh, much more appropriate for that and all of that. So, And it's not just going to sit in a package. So pretty awesome all right so that's the new casting uh let's see here so we got we'll save the ferraris for last i know you guys enjoy those let's get into this western police thing <clears throat> so here it is the packaging is um more than you need for sure for this car but all of the western police releases are in this style of packaging and again i'm going to attempt to take the packaging out without destroying it because so I should preserve this stuff it's not they're not cheap and uh, probably is a good idea although I got this one at a killer price all right so it still comes with the basic box inside of this big box I'll put all that together in a, later um, here's a look around the regular box the gazelle Yeah, uh, so this is a Nissan. I know it's a Nissan. Um, I think it's a Sylvia tooling. It's got mirrors in the picture here. Did it come with mirrors to attach? Doesn't look like it. And usually they have something on the packaging telling you you can attach mirrors if you decide to do so. And I don't see those in this box. Um, I'm looking in the actual other part of the box just in case they are hiding in here somewhere. And I do not... Do not see any, any mirrors or anything. Sometimes they will put parts to attach. Uh, but there's a look at the box. Let's take a peek at the car. Well, this one's actually taped together. So I apologize about that. A little delay here. Let's peel the tape off. So the tooling, <coughs> before we get in any further, is the Nissan Gazelle. I thought this was a Sylvia convertible. Maybe I'm really completely off on it. I swear I already have this tooling in brown. Oh, man, that's cool. All right, so let's zoom in on it. This is a score, dude. Um, it is. Look at the design on the front. It's just cool. It's a very unique Tomica Limited vintage piece. Holy crap, that's cool. Yeah, this thing is rad. Okay, I love the little uh, police light up at the front. The wheels are super cool. Of course, this thing has suspension. Oh man, this is cool. They don't put the tooling number on the bottom of this one, which is weird. I honestly thought this is the same tooling as this. Hang on a second. I've got it right right above me. And I guess it's not. Or is it? It's got to be, right? Or something close to it. Here's the one I have. This piece is not attached, by the way, on this one. And yeah, okay, so it's totally the same. Look at that. It just doesn't come with the um, the back piece. Like, this one comes with the back piece. Just like the rag top being folded down. And for some reason, this one doesn't come with that. I'm not sure why. I couldn't tell you why. It is the Gazelle. 
What the hell? I thought this was like, okay, whatever. Anyway, very cool tooling. Very cool to get this one. It's just weird that it doesn't come with that back piece. You think it would come with that back piece in blue? I'm shaking around the box and stuff because the box obviously isn't opened. It's not in there. Nowhere to be found. So I guess it just doesn't come with it, which is fine. And it's also got a little modified interior anyway with that red thing up front. Um, but man, this is really, really, really cool. This is premium die cast at its finest. All right, it's Ferrari time. What should we do first? Let's do the less of the two cool ones. I'm gonna say this is the uh, Testarossa. I like the 512 a little bit better. This is the original Testarossa, and this is in black. So you guys have seen me open some Kyosho, or Kyosho, Tomica Limited Vintage Ferraris, and Kyosho Ferraris actually, but uh, Tomica Limited Vintage Ferraris in the past. You know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to put on a glove for this one. It's black. It's gloss black, guys. I don't want to put fingerprints all over it. So we're going to go ahead and put on our little hand microfiber gloss. And we're going to set that one down. Let's actually get out the other one right away, too. There's not much to look at on the packaging of these. I've already shown the packaging several times. They're basically kind of packaged like own like a cologne or expensive cologne or maybe an expensive watch and I gotta pull up the other one so these come with the mirrors attached which is great getting out the other one right now maybe getting out the other one So, yep, what you expect from Tomica Limited Vintage, they're amazing looking, and, you know, if you're not a fan of Testarossa, maybe you don't care, but the, uh, they are great, they're awesomely done, and black's a great color for them, it's gloss black, maybe not the best color, of course red is the best color for a Ferrari, but there's some motor detail in there. And here's how cool Tomica Limited Vintage is. So they obviously developed this these toolings um, in tandem with each other at the same time because they pretty much are pretty close to the exact same shape and everything. But you will notice there are some slight differences the more you look at them. So the front end is completely different. See that? Completely different. So they, they co-develop them, I'm sure, at the same time. The, the rear is also uh, different as well, including the exhaust. Um, the motors, or engines, I believe, are the tooling is different on the... Yeah, the tooling is different on them, too. It's hard to look in there, so I apologize about that. But these are so cool, man. So, so cool. So... All right, and that's going to be it for the episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. This ended up being a long one, I think. Um, trying to do it because I had to hack it together. But, uh, man, those are pretty, pretty cool. These obviously roll, too. They got suspension. They're all metal. They got detailed interiors. They're detailed all around. They're absolutely amazing looking. Uh, one thing TLV does not do is put that little mirror sticker thing on the ends of the mirrors, which would be kind of cool if they did that, because they, you know, they did a great job with that. Our oversteer, that's something that they do, right? We just saw that with the Miata. So the Miata should be pretty 164 scale close, too, so let's check how, how these compare. Yeah. But yeah, those mirrors, that's that's really kind of a cool touch. Um, so that's something they could do, maybe, to improve. But really still, they are the best. They definitely are the best. This uh, Hikasi is definitely a contender. Uh, even though with that front tire not rolling, it's just, like I said, squeezing on there. 
should roll. It's got suspension. It's got amazing details. Um, but I don't think it's licensed. I don't think it is. There's nothing on it to indicate that it is. Nothing on the base indicates it. Nothing at all. So, hmm. Used uh, or made not by the permission of Toyota, as far as I can tell. All right, so that's going to be it for this episode, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Uh, thank you guys very much for watching, as usual. Um, please uh, check out the playlist. Please like, comment, subscribe, all that great stuff. Hopefully you enjoyed this premium diecast episode. And let me know which one was your favorite in the comments down below. Have yourself a great day.